you ever replied to your email? Oh, yeah. Hold on. What's this? <gasps> Everyone, we have some really bad news. We've been informed about an incident in Miss Nader's room. And we've gathered all of you here today to work together because you're the best of the best! Now who's in? Me! 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 Woo! Silence. Who's in? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> CSI. Hold it. Forensic technicians, stand by. Okay, CFOs? Oh. Filming. Blondie, Blondie 2, get your cameras and go to the scene. Okay, balls. From the As a forensics technicians, uh, we're the thinkers of the operation. We analyze all the information and evidence that the CSI people collect at the scene of the crime. Things of the sort like oh. fingerprints, blood samples, hair, and also unknown substances. We compare what was found with the data we already know about the suspects. Found something, Vincent. Good job, Tanme. As a crime scene investigator, it's my job to get right into the scene of the crime. Find clues, evidence, anything suspicious. Nothing gets by me. After we collect samples of all the evidence, we hand it in to the forensic technicians for analysis. They handle the rest. Wait, I want to say something. He seems to like chocolate. <laughs> so, um, can I ask you a personal question? It depends how personal, but yes. Oh, well, what's your shoe size? Um, 10 and a half, 11, depending on which country measurement it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. We'll have to do some conversions. And, um, another personal question, um, do you enjoy jumping out windows? No. No, so you have no experience with... Jumping out of windows? With exiting buildings through an open I, window? No. No. Okay. Yeah. Um, what's your height? 195 centimeters. Give or take, or is that pretty, pretty accurate? Pretty accurate, okay. Depends whether I'm wearing size 10 and a half shoes. Alright guys, so, reviewing the facts. We know that suspects 1 and 2, they had come to school to finish a lab thing that they had to go to the locker for. While they were at their lockers, Sinclair was coming along with the locker clippers, they heard a loud noise, they said it sounded like animals. Where was this coming from? The prep room. Number 3 was doing a lab, or trying to do a lab, where she breaks a beaker, it hurts her, she gets a loud scream. In her rage, she kicks the door. This all leads to a loud commotion that the two investigate. Of course, when Sinclair goes to the locker of one and two and says, hey, where is everyone? He goes to investigate as well. Three, in this panic, runs out to clean up. Of course, there's sulfuric acid on this person's arm. One and two get blamed for the mess. Forced to clean up, they have to wear the suits that we saw in the security footage. However, Sinclair eventually does find suspect number three trying to clean up and says, Why is there blood on your hands? What, are you involved in this too? The loud noise, the crying or whatever that happens, attracts one and two, who we already know would investigate a loud noise, to come and see what's going on. Sinclair has had it. He says, Alright, you know, the detention room's closed, but room 333 is still open. Get in there, write the incident report. I'm going to go. We don't know where he goes. Well, the three suspects are now there. One and two decide, you know, it's your fault. How dare you do this to us, number three. They gang up on number three, and a lot of blood, you know, is let up for three. 
This means they're terrified that, oh my god, what are we doing? And I'm pretty sure number three would have said a loud noise. Sinclair comes to investigate, and there's a bleeding student on the floor. Nobody move, he screams. You, sit down, you! But no, two, number two, is panicking. All over himself, all over herself, she can't understand what's going on. Sinclair comes and starts to calm her down, but gets, he's already too enraged, he absolutely hurts her. She falls, head hits the chair, she's already completely out. Now, Sinclair is starting to get worried, oh my god, two damaged children, are they dead? Goes to number one, you. He's already got blood on his hands, number two's blood, he touches the chair behind number one, says, you're not going to tell anyone, right? It doesn't matter. No matter what number one said, Sinclair takes number one's umbrella that was there, that's why there is number one's DNA on the handle, and stabs number one. This is how everyone ends up assaulted. Sinclair, of course being the boss, can't get caught by anyone.